Hello and welcome. Do you want to know how to pay $456 of a rental every single month? That's right. On this example here, I'm going to show you how you can pay $456 for rent in a property that you own, become a real estate investor, do all that fun stuff using FHA loans. If you don't know who I am already, my name is Maxim Cruz. I am a real estate broker as well as a real estate investor. And back in 2011, my wife and I, we decided to delay our wedding ceremony in order to buy a four unit multifamily property where it cash flowed from day one. We lived rent free and you know, it was just an amazing opportunity. And ever since then, you know, we've acquired more property and we've become investors and this has really been a passion of mine. So I wanted to share uh, a few properties with you, do the analysis so you could start to see this and start to you know, do the analysis yourself and start to see that this is a real example. So uh, this is also a special series for my friend Denzel Rodriguez. If you don't know who Denzel is, just look him up. Uh, the finance geek, he has a YouTube channel where he teaches velocity banking. I found Denzel through my search for velocity banking and through that, uh, you know, we came up with a plan of how to pay off our real estate properties and other debts much, much quicker. And again, for all the kingdom citizens, welcome. Thank you for watching this. Now, before I get started and jump into this analysis, let me just do a disclosure because I am a licensed real estate broker. This information that I am showing you is for informational purposes only. This is not investment advice. I always suggest that you check with your local investment licensed professional. Uh, and again, this is for informational purposes only. So let's get right into it. Uh, so try not to focus this number right here. We are going to go line by line. I'm going to explain everything to you as we go. So the property address is 120 Northeast 35th Street, uh, Pompano Beach, Florida, 33064. MLS, MLS number Arlek Robert 1054-8658. Uh, the property is currently listed at $424,000. And uh, also just another thing that I wanted to show you is the FHA limits. The FHA limits for Broward County for a two family property is actually, I believe it's 478,000. So this property is below that and it meets those requirements. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just go back to one of our, my previous videos where I go through some of the terminology and you can see exactly what I'm talking about here as we go through these numbers. So the description here is excellent opportunity for investors set up as three units uh three efficiencies one larger efficiency one water meter two electric meters corner lot uh so let's get into the numbers and then i'll show you some of these potentials uh unit one again there's three studios on the property is rented for 950 unit two is rented for 1150 that's probably the larger one and then the third studio is rented for 675 and this asterisk right here, what that means is that when I factor in for the owner occupied, I'm considering that the owner is going to occupy this studio here again, because these are the ones that have the best income. So we're going to use these numbers in order to, you know, get the most out of the property. So again, we break it down into three separate columns. The first column is cash investment. If you had, you know, a million dollars lying around somewhere and you wanted to invest it into real estate, this is what this deal would look like with a pure cash investment. Then we have 20% leverage. So you're getting bank financing, 80% uh, loan through the bank, 20% down payment. That's what those numbers look like. And then the final scenario is going to be owner occupied. So let's get right into the numbers. First of all, the income, how do we figure out the income? We take 950 plus 1150 plus 675. That gives us a monthly rental amount. We multiply that times the 12 months. That gives us 33,300. Now, typically if this was a bigger real estate deal, you would have a vacancy factor. Maybe it's 5%, maybe it's 10%. And then you would subtract that giving you the gross effective income. So again, in here, we're not considering that. So I want to start uh, getting you trained put, to put your investor cap on and say, Hey, what are some of the additional items that I should consider? And let's, let's keep on going. 
So uh, again, let's look at just the cash scenario. Uh, taxes, 3,468. The insurance, the broker that sent this said that was 1,500. I believe that number was a little bit low, so I put it up to 2,000. Water and sewer wasn't disclosed. I did an estimate of about 600. Landscaping, again, wasn't disclosed. I did an estimate of about 800. Electric, now remember, it did say that there's only two meters on the property, so one of the electrical bills is gonna have to be paid because it's shared by two tenants. So I figured, okay, about $600 uh, for the electrical. And then some repairs, maybe some minor repairs, $800 for the year. That gives us annual expenses of $8,268. Uh, for us to get, there is no financing on this property. So with that, we get what's called an NOI, net operating income. Pretty much it's the difference between this income and your expenses, which is $25,032 for the net operating income. Then as a cash investment, we look at something called cap rate, the capitalization rate. And all that cap rate is, is really a relationship between your NOI, your net operating income, and your purchase price. So if you bought this deal at $424,000 and you had this income and these expenses, your cap rate would be 5.90%, which is right average right now in, uh, you know, this is January 14, 2020. The average market cap rate in South Florida is between five and a half to 6%. So again, this is pretty average for what it is. Now, let's look at the next line. The next line is a leveraged investment. So again, you have some money, you have 20% down payment. 20% down payment of 424,000 is $84,800. So in this scenario, again, the income is the same, the expenses are mostly the same, but financing, we're adding $19,432.71 on an annual basis, which is pretty much your monthly payment multiplied times 12. Then we get our NOI. So then we subtract the income minus the expenses minus the annual debt service. That gives us a total NOI of $5,000. $599.29. Now, in this scenario, we have a different term, which is called COC, cash on cash return. So pretty much what that is, is a relationship between your annual money that you are receiving divided by your actual down payment. So in this scenario, if we take the $5,599.29, divide that by our cash payment of 84,800, we would get a cash on cash return of 6.60%. Again, if you're a bigger investor, if you do any sort of syndication deals, typically they like to look at a 10% number or higher. So again, this really wouldn't work in a syndication type deal. Now let's take a look at owner occupied. Again, the income here is different. Remember, we are living in one of these units, so we're only collecting 950 plus 1150. Multiply that times the 12 months, we get the total uh, income of 25,200. Then on the expenses, the landscaping, I figure, hey, you gotta be living there, so you might as well take care of your own landscaping. And also the repairs, I made the number a little bit smaller, where previous to that it was 800, I made it 400, figuring, hey, you know, if something, you know, not major breaks, you could go ahead and, and take care of that. Uh, and then finally, that gives us the total expenses and we have the financing. Because we're only putting three and a half percent down, which is $14,840, we have principal, interest, and our uh, private mortgage insurance. So that total number for the monthly payment is $2,294.36. Multiply that times 12 gives us an annual debt service of $27,532.31. Once we subtract all that stuff, we have a negative number, which means as the owner, you have to put out of pocket $9,400.31. Now that might not be such a good deal because your monthly out of pocket is $783.36. You know, this studio is rented at six seventy-five. dollars the market value is probably between 900 and 1,000. So I figure, okay, well, even if you were paying $900 in rent somewhere else, now you're only paying 783. In your personal finances, you have a monthly cash flow 
of $116.64. And again, for all of our Kingdom citizens, and if you understand velocity banking, you understand what this number means to you. Now, I do have a gift for you. So we actually have this uh, property analysis tool. It's, a, it's an Excel spreadsheet. It's actually in Google uh, Sheets, Google Docs. So you could go in there, download it, play around, put in your own numbers, look at different properties, analyze it. It's completely free. You don't have to enter your email address. You know, none of that, none of that uh, gibberish. You could just go in there, download it, and play around with the numbers and see what works. Now let's go ahead and take a look to see if I offered 384. And again, this is the value the re, uh, real estate agent brings to you. I am seeing other two unit homes in this vicinity selling for approximately, you know, between the 350 to the 370 range. So even at 384 is a little bit higher than what the averages are. So, but let's see what that looks like. The other thing that we're doing is unit three the unit that the owner is going to occupy we are saying hey in a cash scenario or in a leverage scenario this unit right here i'm going to bump the rent from 675 up to 900. so what's that going to do that's going to increase our income where this scenario was 33,300. this scenario right here is 36,000. our noi uh, after that is 27,732 and the relationship between that number and the 384 price gives us a cap rate of 7.22 percent this scenario right here was 5.90 percent so you can see how the purchase price and the noi changes our cap rate next let's look at the leverage right 20 percent down so 20 percent down right here of 384 at four percent interest with a 30-year charm the down payment on that is 76,800. So once we go ahead and uh, let me see here, once we go ahead and have the income of 36,000, subtract our NOI, which is all of the, uh, you know, all of our income minus our expenses, that gives us our NOI 10,132. Here we are figuring what's called cash on cash return. Because remember, here we only put in $76,800 as our down payment to acquire this property. So now our cash return is 13.19%, where previous to this, it was 6.60%. So again, you can see how that affects that. And then finally, let's look at the owner-occupied one. The owner-occupied one, we do get a little bit more of income. Actually, our income stays the same because remember, this unit three right here, this 675, that's the one that we're going to live in. So we're losing this potential 900 while we live in the property. Then once we subtract all that stuff, we get an NOI of negative uh, 4,950. And why is that number less than this number? Well, there's two reasons. The first reason is actually your mortgage is lower. So the mortgage amount is $40,000 less, which means that your monthly payment is lower. Here on the 424 scenario, it was 2,294. And here with this scenario at the 384, it's 1,923. So that right there is about a 300 uh, $70 difference. So again, that's why that number helps out, which means that monthly out of pocket, you're still coming out $412.51. But even better than that, what do you get? Again, it's a different mindset. It's thinking like the investors think. It is the monthly cash flow. If right now you are paying $900 in rent, and now you own this unit, your monthly out of pocket is only 412. So again, if you understand velocity banking, or if you're just looking at your personal finances, that actually means that you have an additional cash flow now of $487.49 that you could potentially apply towards other debt. Heck, you could even pay the same 900 and pay it into this mortgage. Again, I wouldn't advise that because with Velocity Banking, there's actually better ways for you to chunk and to pay this off quicker. But again, you could use either a line of credit, a personal line of credit. Potentially, you might be able to use uh, your credit card for some other expenses and then put that money into that debt. So again, there are things available. But most importantly, it is this right here, the potential zoning. 
So as a real estate broker, we have access to multiple tools. And when I looked up this property, it's actually in a zone where most of the properties around it are all multifamily. And there's actually right behind it in, in a separate block, there's an eight unit and there's a 12 unit. And then right within that vicinity, there's another four unit and another six unit building. So heck, there might be possibility because this isn't a corner lot for some future time for you to knock this thing down and actually build six units or eight units. And then those numbers would shift and probably look much, much better. So again, there's a potential for you to do things. But uh, again, as we emphasize, it was, we continue to emphasize in these videos, it's all about this monthly cash flow, right? If you, instead of paying $900 out of pocket, if you only had to pay $412.51 out of pocket, I don't know about you, but my math tells me that I would rather pay 412 than 900 because I'm saving about $487 and I could use that money to pay for something else. So with all of that said, again, go and grab your deal analyzer where you could plug in these numbers. If you have a deal that you would like for me to analyze, I'd be more than happy to do it. You don't have to send me the address. You don't have to send me the MLS number. There's only three things that I need to know in order to analyze the deal. Number one, it's the list price or the offer price, whatever you're planning to offer. Number two, it is the income. So however many number of units and however much they're rented per month. And then number three are these expenses taxes, insurance, water and sewer, any maintenance, landscaping, common electric, plowing if you're up in the cold, any sort of those expenses. With those three numbers, we could do a whole deal analysis and come up with some numbers and, and then you could analyze it yourself and see, hey, this works for me or this doesn't work for me. So with all of that, um, again, I am a real estate broker for over 13 years and I've built a database of uh, qualified real estate agents all across the country who would be more than happy to help you do in any sort of these transactions. So if you're looking to buy a property or if you're looking to dispose of your property, you know, I'd be more than happy to set you up with a qualified broker who can help you analyze this deal, get you the maximum price if you're selling or get you the best offer if you're looking to buy the deal and understand that again, this is listed at 424, but we can offer 384 because again, as real estate brokers, when I pull up the public records, they bought this property close to 13 years ago for like $70,000. So again, there is plenty of room for negotiations on this one, I believe. So with all that, hopefully you enjoy your day. Go and grab the deal analyzer. Go check out Denzel's channel uh, in the description below and send me your deal. I'd be more than happy to look at it. Have an awesome afternoon and I'll see you on the next video.